Hey there, it's Pastor T with another Psalmanac, where I hope to help you grow in the practice of prayer through a deepening relationship with the prayer book of the Bible, the Psalms. And this week we are reading, reflecting upon, and praying back to the Lord, Psalm 50. And our Learn by Heart antiphon for this week is from verse 14. I invite you to follow along in your own Bible at home, or to listen as I read. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth, from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, He does not keep silence. Before Him is a devouring fire, around Him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth, that He may judge His people. Gather to me my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you, for the world and its fullness are mine. Do I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked God says, What right have you to recite my statutes, or take my covenant on your lips? For you hate discipline and you cast my words behind you. If you see a thief, you're pleased with him, and you keep company with adulterers. You give your mouth free rein for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I have been silent. You thought that I was one like yourself, but now I rebuke you and lay the charge before you. Mark this, then, you who forget God, lest I tear you apart and there be none to deliver. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To one who orders his way rightly, I will show the salvation of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and perform your vows to the Most High. Habits matter. Rituals are important, but a thankful heart exceeds them all. I've written recently about the importance of habits when it comes to our lives and especially to our spiritual lives, that we shouldn't take for granted the fact that we develop good, positive habits, whether it be of attending worship regularly, studying the scriptures, prayer, all of these are good and God-pleasing things. And ritual, which is a close cousin of habit, is really just codifying and making even more systematic those kinds of habits when it comes to the corporate people of God, the rituals that we have, whether it be of offering the sacrifices of prayer and praise, or whether it be in how we celebrate the liturgy. And all of these things are important and good and God-pleasing in their own way. But there's a temptation that can happen for us, no less than it happened for the Israelites of old. It's the temptation that God addresses and encourages his people to pray back to him in Psalm 50. The temptation is this. It's when these things, whether these habits or rituals or sacrifices, when they become merely rote, which is to say, when we just go through the motions, as the saying goes, when it just becomes a matter not of the heart, but of the lips. I don't even need to think about it. Now, there's a positive side to that. We don't need to think about it because it comes second nature to us. Second nature is a good thing. You don't always want to have to be focusing on every th little thing that you're doing. If it weren't for having things of second nature, then it would be a, a real pain to be brushing your teeth and putting your pants on every single day, or even to go back to where we we're starting at when it came to worship. There's something really beautiful and enriching about being able to slide right into that sense of, for instance, the confession of sins in the place of corporate worship, where we know what the words are, we know the, the movements, so that it's almost a kind of dance before the Lord. But that dance goes south when suddenly we're not really in it, but we're just going through the motions, saying, okay, we're going to do a little song and dance for you, God. And hopefully by us doing that, 
You'll forgive our sins. Give us what we want. We give you what you want. Friends, this is not the life of faith. And this is not the relationship that God desires with us. He gives us those habits and rituals. He gives us those sacrifices as a kind of scaffolding in order to uh, build up our relationship with him. And where Psalm 50 brings us to is to recognize that while those things are helpful and salutary in their own way, ultimately they're insufficient. What God wants from us is a sacrifice of thanksgiving to offer our vows unto him. He speaks sternly to you and me, to any of us that think that we could presume on him simply because we are doing the right things. No, 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 God says. Do you think I really need your sacrifices? Do you think your offerings are keeping heaven going up here? Don't you realize the cattle on a thousand hills are mine? No, what he wants more than anything is thankful hearts, broken and contrite spirits, it'll say in Psalm 51, which is to say people of faith who come before him trusting that everything we have we receive from him and then gladly, thankfully offering back to him prayer, praise, and yes, thanks. We do that in the context of godly habits, of pious rituals, and those things are all edifying in their own way. But praying Psalm 50, we remember that more than anything else, what God wants are thankful hearts that recognize he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, forgive us when our lips are near to you, but our hearts are far away. Convict us, O God, and lead us to recognize when we are merely going through the motions, when our hearts are not truly giving thanks to you. As we pray Psalm 50, we pray that you would lay it more deeply to our hearts um, to convict us of our thanklessness and to show us the ways that you have been so generous and gracious toward us. We pray, O God, that continually our eyes would be open to recognize not just this or that thing as a blessing from you, but that all of life is a gift given to us and vouchsafed in your Son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. And now may you go forth this day with a thankful heart, recognizing all you have as coming from the giver of every good gift. Go in his peace. Amen.